I'm in love with the cocoa. But maybe I shouldn't have loved me the cocoa. Now they took my games off the shelf though. I'm no longer all off in frozen yo. I shouldn't have made me love that cocoa. Japan be crazy with them laws though. But man, I love the cocoa. So what's gonna happen now, you see it though? In the year 2019, we're taking a hard stand here because there's no hope with dough. Okay. Look, look. The one on triple the G O D. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Yo, funniness aside, because I needed some way to ease into what this is we're about to talk about. Because yeah, Judgment just had a new trailer drop, and I have been trying to sit up here and just trying to give this situation with Pierre Tataki some time to try to sit and gestate to try to figure out like what the hell's going on and. At this point, here's what we know. There was this little event that happened in Japan. I don't know. Some old people call it the WWII. And after the WWII, shit got real fucked up in Japan. And then it led to the point to where, like, zero tolerance for anything drugs. You know what? You can have some CP. That's cool, bro. Oh, snort a line, cuz? Mm-mm, no. We, we are not Viper. We, we don't care. We, you, you a cow that never smoked crack, but now you are a cow that smoked crack and your career is being eliminated as we speak. This is crazy. And the thing is, Pierre Tataki's, what he going through right now with judgment being pulled off sales and becoming some weird collector's item, him going to be erased as Olaf from Kingdom Hearts and everything frozen, it's just that he's not the first and he won't be the last. But the thing to take away from it, because, you know, because I had to do a little reading and I have been the past couple of days because as someone who tries to understand other cultures to see where people are coming from, like, I kind of get it. But at the same time, because I live in the United United States of America, KKK, and you know how we see somebody get some drugs, you know what I'm saying? Oh, somebody did some drugs. They'll be on TMZ. They'll be the... They'll be the face of, you know, late night talk shows for a couple of days and you'll forget about them and then in a couple of months everything's okay. I don't think so. Homie of Japan, don't play that. Click. No, you get your whole career wiped out. Because the thing is, in Japanese culture, they feel that it's not right to profit off somebody who is a criminal. And, and I can see that from that point of view of understanding... That's just history. And given that we are the human beings that we are, and given that shit is the way it is, is that ain't nothing going to change about this anytime soon. Because if you take a look at the hard numbers, it may be people behind closed doors snorting all kind of lines, smoking all kind of weed, popping all kind of pills, drinking all sorts of dirty pink Sprite. Because I bet you, how much you want to bet that I can go to Japan right now and go get me some Sakura Dirty Sprite. Me, me and John King, we got to investigate Sakura Dirty Sprite. We got to. But the thing is, is that with things you do you that you ain't supposed to, you ain't supposed to, that you have no business, it's like, hey, well, hey, as long as they don't catch me, bro, it ain't wrong. But as you see, you do the crime, your career gets wiped off because the thing is, is that if Pierre Tataki gonna do some time, he gonna be in jail for a while. Because back in the day, from what I read, if you had a sack of weed, Japan will put you in jail for seven years for a sack of weed. Now, now in the U.S., you get pulled over, you get a sack of weed, depending on what day it is and what cop you're dealing with. The cop may confiscate the weed, write you a ticket, let you go off your way. You get a little ignorant, they might have to put you in a home cell for a minute. Seven years for a sack? Come on now. Like, I, I, even I think that's a little redonkulous. Seven years for a sack. And I'm just like, well, okay. Because when, cause then if you try, because if I'm going to run non sack with it with this, let, let, me, let me tell the internet a little story about this dude that I knew. One night, this dude, this dude got really, 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 really drunk. Really drunk like... Duh! I'm fucked up! Like that. This dude stumbled his way home and on the way there decided, yo, I got to take a piss and took a piss in a public park. 
where children play. And this was like at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. You want to know what happened to my dude? Police happened to be rolling by wrong place, wrong time. They locked him up and he had to register as a sex offender. So yeah, he had to go do the whole song and dance. Hey, yo, my name is so-and-so. I got really drunk and pissed in a park, but they think I'm going to rape children. So, you know, yeah. That's one of those things that I felt that, you know, that don't really fit the crime. He made a mistake. And, you know, people make mistakes. But to be labeled as a child sex offender because you took a piss in a public park, I don't know. But maybe also what maybe had to do with he couldn't afford him a really good lawyer. So when they stuck him with that, you're going to hold that L. But then we could get in a whole nother non-sequitur about our judge, about the United States of America's justice system and how not everybody gets fair representation. It's like you got fools stealing people hard-earned retirement money, billions of bill, billions of dollars, billions of dollars. Club fed for you. Well, um, you had used a couple sacks of weed. You'll get to spend 10 years in jail, not because you had a couple sacks of weed, but maybe possibly because of the color of your skin or something like that. Because, again, we live in a world that ain't fair sometimes. And sometimes people get the wrong end of the stick. So I'm sitting up here thinking about all of these things because I know I was going to talk about, I knew I was going to get into some non sequiturs about this, of trying to understand, like, do, do the punishments for what happened to us as we go through the justice system, do they really fit? What the hell you going to take an L for? You know what I'm saying? Like, And, and that's where I'm coming from with it. Because to have your whole career scraped from the history book because you did a line of cocaine, it's like, well, I don't know. Maybe you need, because in America, we just send your ass to rehab. You go through the 12 steps, you do a little prayer, you hold a little coin, and you're all forgiven, and then hopefully you don't relapse. You don't get your whole career taken. Now, in America, depending on how dumb you were when you was on your binge, your hustle might take a hit. But you can always come back. You know what I'm saying? You can always come back. You can sit up here and list of fools over the past decade that have been on TMZ on some dumb stuff and then all of a sudden, it's all good. I'm like, yo, we are the country that enables sex tapes to turn ordinary people we had no idea into stars making money on this. Think about that. Think about how you can weaponize a sex tape for your own good. And it's like, well, fine. You know what I'm saying? It just so happens your movie coming out. Ooh, my leaked titties are on the internet. That's happened more than once. But still, I'm just sitting up here, like, in this, just trying to, like, really legitimately, like, figure out, like, what the hell, though? Like, again, and I'm going to ask this question, and I'm going to keep asking it because I don't legitimately think that you snort a line of cocaine equals your career get erased off the internet. You get erased from existence. They then took, they then took this man out of judgment, and you know what I'm saying. We gonna take a look at the trailer, see if he's in it or not. You ain't Olaf no more. You had TV shows in the cut, them off. Anything, and your name has just been. Your name is just like, mm, 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 mm. no, 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 no. But again, you know what I'm saying. Like, like, like when, like when I, like when I got on the mic last week and did my state on my state of society address, I was just kind of like just sitting there thinking, like one of the things that I really wanted to get out because that's how I felt, and it wasn't explicitly implied, and I didn't say it much. But at the end of the day, when people make those judgments and try to call themselves judge or an executioner on things that they don't know nothing about, and all you have are what may be facts until they're proven to be actual facts. Of who are you to judge someone else? And in this instance, is that Pierre Tataki isn't being judged. It's just that you just happen to do crack cocaine in a place that's like, hell no, don't do crack cocaine ever. Don't even think about the word crack cocaine. Hell, don't think about the word C. I take some small offense to that for reasons you all know. But that's the kind of culture that Japan has. They got zero policy on drugs in general, period. We're a little softer. 
You know what I'm saying? Everywhere is everywhere. There may be a time in the future when we all long gone where we may have some straight line of we all agree this is what things are. But until then, our history dictates in this instance how we punish those who break the law. Because at the end of the day, no matter what, Regardless of how dumb it is to find a copy of Judge Eye at this juncture, it's still at the end of the day, according to Japanese law, prepared to talk, he committed a crime. And I don't want to forget that. Even even jokes opening this, me getting into this and being in the mix for it this long, he still committed a crime. But my question is, is that enunciating that fact is the punishment fitting for what you did. Yeah, you might need to get some damn help, bruh. Maybe. I don't know if you snort a line and looking at people like Bopper and telling them, man, hey, you a coward. You ain't never smoke crack, blah, blah, blah. And sitting up here trying to legitimately figure out is erasing this man's career the proper way to handle this in this day and age. Because technically, this, all this been done is technically engulf the strike sand effect all over Judge Eyes. Which then leaves us with where we are now, and this is a perfect sequitur because we have a trailer to watch, is understanding that they're going to eliminate him. That the update, they're going to replace his actor and all that. Game's still going to come out on time. Things of that nature. Everything is going to be what it is. No matter what, it's going to be fine. Don't worry about that. Game's still coming. They got to replace the actor, do all his lines, all his stuff. That's what they're going to do. I'm still wondering if this trailer got a minute or if this trailer was made like before and it just happened to slip out and then during the time I downloaded the trailer and now they put up a new one. The answer is I'm not sure, but we're going to find out though. Speaking of finding out that information, super, super, duper, monk, magic box, girl, where you at, baby? Super, duper, monk, magic box. Yo, um, I just remembered something. I just remember something. Actually, I gotta pull up something on that Google mother Chrome. Are we gonna we gonna go to it after the trailer? But I just want to pull it up now because I forgot all about that. Like super forgot, super forgot. So give me a moment, waiting for it to load now. Let me see. Ah, oh, you gotta love live TV, kids. You gotta love live television. Oh boy, you're sweaty. You're sweaty. Oh, I left my water upstairs. Oh, boy. Left my water. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, I got it up. I got it up. Okay. I got it up. So, with all of that being said, y'all ready to see a trailer? Y'all ready to see a trailer? For the sequel, so let me get it up. No, no, frame. Okay, frame. Better. Me, Stupid Dude Mother Magic Box, Congregation, Bessie and Janine. Stuff me, yeah. We we good now. There's one more thing that I do have to say about this to just you know round all this up. But let's watch the trailer talk that, and then I, I'll give y'all some real wise Uncle Triple advice when we're done. So with that being said, <clears throat> now activating judgment. Dot e x e. Ready, mature for all this stuff that's wrong. Come, Rocha. No better place for a night out. The whole town's run by the toughest Yakuza family out there. And the deeper you dig, the more interesting things get. Over three months, three Kansai Yakuza have turned up dead. That's not the only thing, though. All three of them were missing their eyes. We find the defendant, Kyohei Hamura, innocent. Hamura definitely didn't kill Kume, but he had to have been involved. The real killer is still out there. I've given him a name, the Mole. The cops already did their whole song and dance searching for the Mole. If anyone's gonna know about the Mole, it's Hamura. Get this fucker back to the outfits! Hey, you wanna try helping out? Sure thing. Think this is some kind of Yakuza pissing contest, do you? Come on. The mole is way bigger than you know. 
I'll do whatever it takes to bring Hamura and the Maul down. You still want to see? You know, you won't know what hit you. Yo! Super, super do movie magic box, man. Thank you very much for bringing us that, that heat, heat, heat. Appreciate it. Okay. I will say this. Voice acting off the meter. You, you, you gotta love that. You, you gotta love that. Give me a moment. Oh, um, Google, my uncle uh, Chrome, where you at, baby? <laughs> Yo, Google, my Chrome. Yo, just want to quickly let you know. You can pre-order this video game. If you pre-order this video game, you can play it on June the 21st. Four whole days early. Because, you know, this is the new thing. It, it used to be... This used to be... This used to be a bug, not a feature. Seriously, like, for real, like... Let me get... Let me, let me give you an example. I got the King of Fighters Maximum Impact, the first one. A week early, back in the day, from EB Games. Strategy got everything. It ain't like it was back then where you could sell a game on a low low and then not get on the internet and blab that you got it for the low low a week early. You know, stuff and things. Now, pre-order pre -order bonuses is play the game early. Well, they got to incentivize something because we, we, we could get into that debate and I, I have done that 50 million times around here and I don't really think that this is, this is a battlefield where I want to play that, but... You know, you do what you can. I'm like, judgment gonna be that crap for real. Like, I gotta say that. You know, bring it back to me. But I just want to show y'all the yo. Game come out the 25th and things like that. Here are pictures and things and blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta love all that. You get a free theme. You know, if you want a theme, you know, we love things. We love those. So it is what it is with that. So, you can go ahead and bring it back to me now. So, I wanna talk to y'all about one more thing before we get up out here. Given that. We, we spent, before we watched the Judgment trailer, really talking about and trying to put into context, like, what's really going on here. Let's put a very important thing into context for you. It only takes one second, just one, to understand and know what it is you're doing. Yo, internet, get down the street, use your noodle more. Because, see, I'm still learning. And I'm still trying to impart those with on people that I care about. You got to think. Think again, think again, and think again, then act. Life is tactics. I guess that's the lesson Uncle Trip was trying to impart to you. Because, see, if you know drugs are bad, and you know your career is going to get eliminated off the face of the planet, maybe you shouldn't snort cocaine. I'm like, yo, I I've known people who can smoke crack. I done known great, wonderful people who, who smoke cocaine and lost their life. And we ain't even talk about these people are dead. That these people who are people who had promised, people who were good people. But then a drug ruled their every thought and emotion. Some of those people were fortunate enough to get help. Some of those people, unfortunately, are no longer with us. But I have had... The displeasure, and I'm using that word, the displeasure, to watch people that I know sit up her and let a drug sit up her and undercut what good they could do as a decent human being. Because regardless of all the shit I talk about her and everything we do, I try the best I can to be a decent human because it's the only thing I can do. Because like I said in that, in that state of society address, being decent is a skill you learn and you cultivate. It's not something you're born with. Be careful out here in these streets. I, I keep telling y'all that, but it's real. She's legitimately real out here. We are talking about a man who done lost his whole career because he decided that I want to do some drugs. I'm like, you a grown adult. Now, hell, you know, take, take, away, take all that, rewind that. You a human being. You made that choice and you have to live with either the correct or incorrect that come with your choices. I'm like, I know a whole bunch of people that smoke weed. I do. I know a whole bunch of people that smoke weed all the time. I'm glad for a lot of those people I know that sit up here and light up their green and stuff. They got well-paying jobs. 
They got jobs that ain't making you drop every week. Hell, they got jobs that sit up where they ain't even, they the boss. So they can smoke all the weed they want because who you going to tell me no? In that, you know what I'm saying, you got to sit up here and you really got to think about these choices. Because finding a job is hard. Especially if you smoking weed and you got to take pisses. Nah. Because I'm going to tell, tell, tell you, give you a quick, another quick Uncle Triple story if we get up out of here. I know it, dude. I know a dude smoked a whole bunch of weed. All, all he used to do, because he, he had a little money, all he used to do was smoke weed all day. Great dude. Talk to that dude to this day. I rapped with that dude last week and just asked him, how the fuck you doing? You want to know what he did? He had to sit up here and take a drug test for a job he was trying to get. Job job back then, like this was like 2006, 2007. So Gig was paying decent, like $12, $13 an hour. And for a decade ago, plus money given how we was living. Yo, that's a lot of money to be making per hour. You know what I'm saying? He drunk some bleach water. Like, that, that's one, that's a, that's a little common myth. You drink some, you drink, you drink a little bit of water, you drink some whole bunch of water, water, you take a little of this, and then you hit a whole gallon, hit a gold gallon of water to flush it out. He spent two weeks in the hospital because that shit murdered his fucking insides. But if he wasn't smoking weed in the first place, he wouldn't have drunk and drinking water trying to set up her drinking bleach with a, with, with a gallon of water chaser and ended up in the hospital for two weeks. And then you have to explain that to somebody. He ain't got to explain it to nobody, though. Mo. We just, I, every now and then I clown him about it. And he'd be like, ha ha, yeah, T, yeah, 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 I know. That was kind of stupid. Yeah, it kind of was. It kind of was. Love that dude to death. He probably watching this video and know I'm talking about his ass. Now get in the comments. I, I, I don't want to front you out. Just know, I, you know, always, man. I've been knowing, I've been knowing that dude since like, since like ninth grade. You know what I'm saying? I've been knowing that dude forever. <laughs> knowing that dude since I, since I stepped foot in the high school. Still rap with him. Still got love for him. He drank some bleach and chased it with some water, and he landed himself in the hospital. But those are choices that you make, and you got to live with those consequences. He fine now. Ain't nothing wrong with his insides for real. He was able to recover, doing quite fine, living his life, doing his thing. But at that time, yo, we was kind of scared homie wasn't coming back home because he drank some bleach water. Use your noodles. Okay, kids, that's the lesson I'm important. Given that we've been talking about people smoking crack, given that we sitting up here talking about history and the choices that we make that because our history and where we come from generations ago dictate how we still live, make better choices. Make better choices. Because that's all you can do in this world as a human being to survive is to make better choices because you live in a lot of people who ain't making the best ones. And a lot of times, they making their choices over there and they don't affect you. But sometimes there are people out here making choices that affect your way of life. And you got to be ready and prepared to use your noodle to be stepping ahead of fools like that. I got to do it every day. So I just want, I just want to, even, even in this, we talking about judgment and all this other stuff. I want to get at you just as a reminder that, yo, use your noodles out here. Think five times at once. Don't act five times and don't even think at all. I've known some people like that too. Those people, some of them are spending the rest of their lives in jail. Because they thought once and acted five times. And made a mistake in the heat of the moment. Cost them whatever freedom they have. And I hate that. I hate that as people that, that I love that is trapped in this system because... You, you did this one time, but you did it at this five, and you paid the price. And that's and that's what it is. Yo, you can sit up here and argue all you want. It's like, do 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 it fit the crime? Do 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 your crime fit the time? Do 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 is punishment working? Take a look at the numbers. At the end of the day, though, you're still human. You going sometimes. The rest of you going to get the better of making the, making the best choice up here by not knowing what your options are and not knowing what those consequences are. So again, let me say this one more time just so that we putting it out there. Use your noodle. Use your noodle. Use it a whole bunch. Then once you see what your options are, make the best choice for you 
And and if that and if that you include people that you love and care about like you do for me, because yo, I make a lot of decisions every day that not only affect me, but affect people around me, the people not even in my ain't same spirit. Because I know important how I know important my choices are. And I learned that early on when I was out here making dumb ones. Whether that's not thinking, messing with the wrong people that whole night. But you do what you can, and it's all you can do. You're not perfect. No one's expecting you to be, and no am I trying to put that pressure on you as your uncle Triple. No. What I'm telling you is, use your noodles, eh? Hey, hey. Don't get your cranium cracked because you ain't out here thinking. Because all it takes is for you to slip up once. Just like all it takes is one time to complete it, all it takes is one time for you to get completed. And you'll never be the same again. Regardless of that, we have got more show for you. Given, given I had to sit up here and I had to had to had to give y'all some of that good knowledge. We got some work for you. We got some, we got some things we need to take care of, some catch up that we need to handle, and some work that need to be put in. So I'd advise you of the following. Sit back. Relax and stay tuned. I am, of course, the one in your triple GOD, aka Yo Uncle Triple. You know I got Squish Murder and the Squad in the congregation with me. You got I got Bessie in the building always hold me down. You hear Janice, she purring. Cause she know, cause she knows it's important that I get this work out to you. She pushing her, she pushing her heart out to make sure this to make sure this work get to you. Cause she know how important it is. Wink gun. On fold. You damn straight. Like I said. We've got more show for you live right here on Team GRF TV. And we've got it for you right after these commercial messages. <laughs> as someone who comes off as a Saturday morning cartoon villain, because you know that's just the motif we're running around here. I show hit y'all with that Saturday morning special with um with the with the smarts of Michelangelo telling you don't do drugs. <laughs> Man, look. Man, you know what? Real quick before we get up here, man, yo, shout out to Funny and Dido, man. They just, man, you know, they. I don't know if y'all have seen these. Like, they do a very special episode. They did one on Blossom. <laughs> like, they did one on Blossom. I'm like, dude, they write this off the chain. Y'all like, if y'all ain't seen, if y'all ain't seen Zach Morris is trash, um, a very, a very special episode or telling novellas as hell, those, those are some suggestions of some Funny and Dido stuff to watch, man. I'm just like, just dumb. I, I can't even remember the line, but it was about a Blossom episode with a gun. Just like, oh man, I, I, man, look, I can't even think of it right now. I can't even think of it. But yo, like I said, man, we got one show for you. Use them noodles. Mm -hmm. Use them noodles. More show for you right after these commercial man.